Hi, I'm Faith Behrens. I'm one of HSLDA's special needs consultants. And this workshop is called Dyslexia Demystified, Help and Hope for Homeschoolers Struggling with Reading. My goal for this workshop is that you're going to come out with some tools to put in your reading teacher toolbox. So this is to help you as homeschool mom, parent, grandparent to be successful in teaching your struggling readers. Okay, so I just want to let you know that HSLDA's educational consultants are here to help you along your homeschooling journey. And we are here to answer your questions and your emails and to help you problem solve um, any aspect of your child's um, learning struggles. To learn to read is to light a fire. Every syllable that is spelled out is a spark. I love this quote and I just so love teaching reading. It's one of the great joys of being a homeschool mom. And I just really wanna share with you today that you can be your own uh, child's reading expert. You are the expert when it comes to your children and you don't have to be a reading specialist to teach reading, even to struggling learners or kiddos with um, dyslexia or specific learning disabilities. You can do this. So I wanna arm you with some some background and some research and then give you some practical tips and strategies. So let's talk a little bit about what research says about reading instruction. First of all, phonemic awareness skills and letter naming are two key predictors of reading success. And did you know that about 75% of all people are going to learn how to read no matter what methodology of instruction you choose. So there's been this great debate about phonics or whole language or a mixed uh, balanced literacy approach and the reading wars have been going on for years and years. But what I want you to know is that no matter which methodology you choose, pretty much any kid is gonna learn how to read. But for, but for the rest of the population, so about 15 to 25% of the population that struggle with teaching reading, really what we need is a systematic, explicit, direct instruction approach. And phonics is the best approach to teaching reading. And uh, multi-sensory teaching, as well as um, teaching sight words, um, included with phonics instruction, so that balance, that's really what we need, that's the sweet spot, and that is going to work with the most struggling readers. Also, we need to keep in mind that students who are struggling with reading, they typically struggle with reading fluency, not just decoding, so we wanna implement something called repeated readings or repeated timed readings, and just lots of increased reading experiences, lots of time to practice reading at home. That's going to help students get better with reading. Students positively uh, benefit from being taught what's called morphology or the roots of words. So teaching Greek and Latin roots of words is very, very helpful. It helps with vocabulary as well as decoding um, and understanding comprehension. So I wanna talk about some um, solid teaching strategies to implement at home for your kiddos who are struggling. Again, lots of time with repetition and practice reading and providing mediated learning. So what I mean by that is that you are learning alongside of the child, you are problem solving, you are modeling your thinking um, with the student and you're actually modeling strategies to them. So for instance, let's say your student um, comes to a tricky word and they just skip it and read on and then they never go back to fix it up. Well, you as the parent can model, hey, you know, when I'm reading and I encounter a tricky word, I just skip it and I go on and I read a couple more sentences, but then I go back and then I wanna model that for my student. We go back, we try to problem solve, we clarify, we try to sound it out. And so you are, you're modeling your thinking and then you're also modeling the strategy that you want your student to employ. And then you give them an opportunity to practice what you've modeled and what you've instructed them to do. And that's called mediating lear mediated learning. It's not just assigning the student a task to do and sending them off to try to do it on their own. You're actually giving them guided practice and feedback. 
Also providing lots of time to read connected text. And this is why students who are homeschooled, I think, outperform public school peers all the time it's because we, they have longer stretches of time to pursue learning and to actually read connected text. There was a researcher named Dr. Nell Duke, and she did a study about time that students spend reading connected text in classrooms across America. And she found that students spend an average of 3.6 minutes a day reading connected text in public schools. And most of it was fiction, not, it didn't include much nonfiction. So in homeschool, we have a lot more time for repetition practice. We can mediate learning and we can provide time for students to read connected text. Also by doing the timed repeated readings, which you can Google search how to do a timed repeated reading, that is a wonderful strategy to improve decoding and reading fluency at home. We want to look for materials that are multi-sensory, explicit, and systematic. And I'm going to give you a list of some wonderful reading curricula to choose from. Because that multi-sensory, explicit, and systematic teaching is the best approach, specifically for students with dyslexia and specific learning disabilities. And then while you're working with your kiddos at home, be sure to be encouraging and positive and make reading a fun experience because literally if something is hard or we get frustrated, learning shuts down. We go into fight, flight, fear, and the brain literally shuts down. So we want to work with our kiddos in a fun and engaging way, play lots of reading games, um, sit beside each other and enjoy stories, do bedtime stories, things like that, because by making it um, a positive experience, they are going to love doing it and they're gonna be motivated to practice reading even more. I'd like you to know some of the services that your HSLDA educational consultants can provide to you. Um, so when you do have trouble um, working with your student at home or they're struggling with a concept or a certain skill in reading and you're not sure why, you are welcome to call us. We do phone consultations. We also provide email support. We do have a digital e-newsletter. And another thing that can be really helpful for struggling readers is to do a reading assessment at home or to have a reading specialist assess your child. Well, one of the things that we provide is we rent out the Brigance assessment kits for members. And those assessment kits can help you target which skill within reading is difficult. Is it decoding? Is it vocabulary? Um, is it uh, difficulty with understanding you know, terminology? Is this a comprehension problem? Are they lacking in sight words? Things like that. So. Um, the Brigance assessments will really help you to pinpoint why your student is struggling with reading or literacy skills, and then it will provide you with um, feedback and suggestions for how to target instruction at home. Doing the Brigance assessment also allows you to set goals as a homeschooling parent for what you need to work on for the school year. So these are just some of the things that we provide to members. We also have um, grants available through Compassion, our charitable arm, which many families find helpful because then they can use the grant to purchase um, a reading intervention or some type of therapy or a specific curricula that is going to help um, their struggling student. So let's talk about some of the key components for reading. Obviously reading is, um, it's a complex um, process that happens in the brain. There are lots of different um, parts of the brain that light up and work together um, during the reading process. And it, it happens for people who are good readers very automatically. And um, the reading loop, the auditory loop is housed in the left hemisphere primarily of the brain. But for students with dyslexia, um, that auditory loop and that reading loop has, um, it's been difficult for them. And so the brain, because we're just fearfully and wonderfully made, the brain says, oops, that pathway is, um, 
is hard for me. And then what happens is, um, and I'm just giving a simplistic view of what happens in the dyslexic brain, is the brain says, whoops, this pathway or this neural connection is weak. This is hard for me. So it rewires literally. And what happens in the dyslexic brain is the person starts to over rely on the right hemisphere. They start looking at the shapes of words, maybe one or two of the letters, and try they try to memorize things. And then a pathway gets laid down in the right hemisphere. And they also over rely on the pre frontal cortex um, and the front lobe of the brain. And so it's a different wiring that occurs and it's just not as efficient, it's not as fast. Um, it's not that there's something wrong with the student, it's just a different pathway. And so I wanna help you understand as a parent because you are the reading expert, you're the teacher, the expert for your student, I want you to understand um, some of the background of, of reading and um, the different um, parts of reading because it is a very complex process. It involves um, decoding, processing strategies, the applying of phonics rules to sound out words. But phonics is just one small piece of a very big reading puzzle and phonics alone is not enough. Understanding language, everything really starts with language and with verbal skills and builds on that with reading. And I always tell parents that reading is really an auditory task before it's a visual task. It starts with language and everything builds from there. So this is um, a visual of what's often referred to as the reading rope, and this was created by Hollis and Scarborough. They're researchers in the field of reading. And so what this shows us is there's just many different threads that weave together to create the, um, the efficient uh, process of reading. But as you can see, everything builds on language. And so we start with language comprehension, and our students need to have rich background knowledge. They need to have rich vocabularies and they need to understand the language structure, our syntax. Um, and they need to have strong verbal reasoning skills as well as uh, literacy knowledge. So we have to have um, understanding or basic concepts of print like that when we read in English, it goes from left to right. Um, you know, we put spaces between the words, they need to understand the punctuation. Obviously, there's all these different concepts of print that they have to come to understand. They also have to understand that, oh, a fiction genre works differently than reading narrative um, text or um, nonfiction works differently than fiction. Also at the bottom, you can see word recognition skills. Well, there's different pieces to word recognition. First, students have to have strong, what's called phonological processing or phonological awareness. Well, what does that mean? All phonological awareness means is understanding that words are made up of individual sounds. So for instance, if I said the word cat, you would understand that there are three phonemes, k, a, t, there's three sounds. And you would be able to understand, well, what word do we get if I take the k away from k, a, t? Well, if I take the k, the first sound away, I'm left with at. A person with good phonological awareness skills can hear individual sounds within words they can hear the differences. They can discriminate well between an I and an E eh and an U. Uh. They can manipulate sounds. They can take sounds away. They can change the sequence of sounds. So for instance, say the word flat, flat. Take the F away. What do you get? You get lat. Say the word flat again, flat. Take the ul sound away. What do you get? You get fat. That's called deletion, taking sounds away. A student with poor phonological awareness, poor phonological processing, they will have difficulty with playing with sounds within words and playing those type of games like listen to these sounds. S, p, it. What's the word? Spit. <laughs> 
A student with poor phonological processing skills will have difficulty with that task, and that task is called auditory blending or sound blending. Again, we're not doing anything with letters at this point. I'm not showing them anything visually. These are all auditory tasks, and a student with dyslexia has very poor auditory processing skills and those phonological awareness skills. So those are things that need to be remediated. Then, because they have these poor phonological processing skills and weak auditory processing skills, the next thread of this reading rope is weak because that impacts their ability to decode and it also impacts their ability to spell and encode because if you can't hear the sounds or you don't understand the difference between an i and an e and an a, uh, what are you going to get? You're going to get poor spelling, right? And poor decoding. So you can see how all these threads go together. And then it impacts sight word recognition as well, because often students with dyslexia, they not only have these poor auditory skills and phonological processing skills, but oftentimes they have a weakness in what's called visual memory for what words look like or orthographic memory. Well, if you have difficulty holding on to a picture of what a word looks like and holding on to a sequence of letters, you're going to be a poor speller or you may not be able to remember or recall what the sight word is. And sometimes students with dyslexia, they can be a pretty good decoder, but they have really bad spelling skills. They're really poor with spelling because of that weak orthographic uh, memory for what words look like. Sometimes students can, can have um, okay spelling skills, um, but they're poor with decoding or they're poor with fluency, or they can have both. And then other times students with dyslexia can have a third difficulty along with it, and that's the dysgraphia piece, where maybe they could spell okay, they can spell it out loud to you, but as soon as they go to put it on paper, they mix up the letters, sequences, or they have trouble with the actual motor piece of getting the words down on paper. And so we can have students with dyslexia, but then the dysgraphia piece or they may not have the dysgraphia piece at all. And then there's a third, another type of um, dyslexia issue, which is called dyscalculia, and that's the math version of dyslexia. So dyslexia is really a complex um, difficulty, and there's different types of, dys of dyslexia. So if your student is struggling with dyslexia or struggling with reading and you're not sure why, please don't hesitate to call or email HSLDA special needs consultants because we want to help you to problem solve and then give you some um, curricula as well as interventions and strategies to help your student at home. But I really felt like it's important to give you some of the background and the research and to understand um, the complex process of reading and why assessing your student to figure out why reading is difficult is really a key piece to finding success. Because once we know the why behind what's going on with the student, why they're struggling with reading, then we can come up with a, a plan that is really gonna target the area that they're struggling in and we're gonna help them to really start to take off and um, be successful. And that's what's so exciting about homeschooling because they get to help families do that and you guys get to be your child's uh, reading specialist and you really can do this. You don't have to have a, a degree in dyslexia or uh, a reading degree. It's, it's really not rocket scientist <laughs> uh, science teaching um, students with dyslexia. You can do this. So really all dyslexia is, is a difficulty with words. That's what, what it means. Um, it's a dysfunction or a difficulty uh, with words. We do know that dyslexia is familial. It's often genetic. My um, husband is dyslexic and I have dyscalculia. So my daughter um, has a specific learning disability. She actually had dysgraphia when she was uh, younger and she does struggle with some reading, but uh, mostly it comes out in the area of spelling for her as well as math. 
We do know that it's neurobiological in origin, it's developmental and it is chronic, and it affects, depending on what studies you read, anywhere from five to 15% of, of the general population. That's according to the Mayo Clinic, the Yale Center for um, Dyslexia and Creativity, and the Center for Learning Disabilities, as well as the World Health Organization. So what type of reading interventions should we use being homeschoolers? What options are available? There are so many options available to homeschoolers and that's why I want to offer hope to you. Most school systems use the Wilson Language Program if you're lucky enough to find a school system that actually implements a um, a dyslexia intervention, most of them are using Wilson. And Wilson will not um, sell their program to parents unless you were trained in that. You can find Wilson trained tutors, so you could outsource to a trained Wilson language tutor. But some of the top programs that I recommend to families are Susan Barton's Reading and Spelling, the Barton method for uh, reading and spelling. Now you can find a Barton tutor as well on Susan Barton's website, but you can, as a parent, you can purchase her materials and she has like a little training you can do online and many resources online so that you can be equipped to use um, her materials at home. All About Reading and All About Spelling are, um, that's one of my top picks that was written by a homeschooling mom who became trained as a dyslexia specialist, and then she developed this curriculum to be able to help other parents. The Logic of English is another wonderful reading curriculum. It's the logic of English and the rhythm of handwriting. And all of these um, curricula and programs that I'm recommending to you are what's called Orton-Gillingham-based programs. So the Orton-Gillingham program or methodology of instruction is research-based and it is the most effective for students with dyslexia. It's what's recognized all over the world. It's the gold standard for dyslexia reading intervention. So all of these programs that I am recommending to you today are Orton-Gillingham-based. So you can feel confident if you choose one of these programs that you can Use it at home. Most of them are very scripted. They're very easy to follow. Some are more expensive than others, but you get to choose which one you want to use. And you could also decide, I don't wanna be the one to deliver this at all. I wanna hire a tutor, or I want to put my student in a program that's online, such as Lexercise.com. Uh, you can go to their website and check out their program. There's also a program that's not on the slide called Pride Reading, which is phenomenal. And you can find a Pride Reading Tutor, or again, you can get the materials and deliver it yourself at home. It's really whatever you feel comfortable with and what you have the time to implement. And you want to find something that's going to match your budget, your time, uh, and your family structure. But these are options for you. Again, you can do a clinic-based intervention work with a tutor, or you can get the materials yourself and deliver it at home yourself. All right, so I did wanna just take a very few minutes to go through some of the processing areas that often students struggle with with dyslexia. You may notice that your student is having visual processing problems like difficulty with discriminating letters or mixing letters around P's, and Q's and B's and D's, M's and W's. So that's a visual discrimination problem. Sometimes students have what's called visual figure ground difficulty where um, they have, it looks like they're having trouble understanding or um, getting the print off the page. So sometimes using a colored overlay can be helpful because it helps the letters to stand out more. Changing the background, having um, black letters on white or white to black. You can um, also use audiobooks with um, having the book on a screen so they can follow along as well as hear it. These are some tips for helping um, with visual figure ground or visual tracking. 
Often our students have trouble again with that orthographic memory, the visual memory for what words look like. And sometimes students are struggling with muscle convergence or eye teaming. So their eyes aren't working together and students um, who are able to articulate um, why reading is hard or what reading looks like, they'll often get headaches or their eyes are watering, they're squinting, or they may cover one eye. You'll often see them leaning over, um, rubbing their eyes, complaining of headaches. Those are all signs and symptoms of convergence muscle um, tracking problems or muscle convergence issues. And we recommend that you see a developmental optometrist if you're noticing any of those signs or symptoms. Another area of processing that tends to be weak for students with dyslexia, again, is that auditory processing piece. Sometimes students struggle with auditory memory. So I could say, go upstairs, get your backpack, brush your teeth, and meet me in the kitchen. And my son may go upstairs, get his backpack, come down to the kitchen. Did you brush your teeth? Oh no, I forgot. So remembering more than two steps can be weak, that auditory memory. Again, uh, remembering sequences of sounds discriminating the differences between sounds, the sound sequencing that I talked about earlier, the phonological processing and phonemic awareness skills that I talked about earlier. Those can all be weak for students with dyslexia. And remember that phonemic awareness, that phonological processing piece you talked about really may be the missing ingredient. Oftentimes students who are struggling with reading, parents will, will just do more We'll do more academics, we'll do more tutoring, we'll do more reading, we'll do more phonics. And we, if we could back up and really explore that phonological processing piece that I talked about earlier, where um, they can play with sounds, can they rhyme, can they segment sounds, you know, get out your little dinosaur counters or your um, linking cubes and have them put out one color block or one color dinosaur for each sound. Listen to this word, flat. Let's put out one cube or one colored marker for each sound. Can they do that? Can they segment sounds? Can they isolate sounds? Tell me what the middle sound is in this word. P, ig, pig. What's the middle sound? What's the first sound? What's the ending sound? So can they isolate sounds? Can they blend sounds together? Can they syllabicate? Can they clap or tap? Um, hippopotamus, hippopotamus. How many parts does it have? Can they clap it? Basketball, how many parts? How many syllables? And can they count those? If any of those skills are weak, then we need to back up and we need to work on those skills because phonics alone isn't gonna fix those difficulties. And any of those dyslexia and reading intervention programs that I recommended earlier, they are really gonna delve into taking time to remediate this piece, that phonemic awareness um, ingredient. And lastly, I want to talk about the language skills. So, so many students who are struggling with learning, they have an underlying processing problem in the area of language. It's a language-based processing problem. For students with dyslexia and auditory uh, processing disorder, oftentimes they are mislabeled as ADD or ADHD because often their processing problem looks like the student isn't paying attention. You must not have been paying attention to what I said because you're not remembering what I said. No, they're not remembering what was said because they're having an auditory memory problem or they're misunderstanding what we're saying because they have an auditory processing disorder. So it's super important um, before we just jump to a conclusion of attention deficit problem and put children on medication, it's super important to really explore the why learning is hard. And that's why I always tell parents, if your child is struggling, one of the first places to start is to go see a developmental optometrist to rule out a visual processing problem or to 
identify a visual processing problem. And the second key piece for success and to bring help and hope is to go get a thorough language evaluation with a speech and language pathologist and an audiologist because those medical providers are going to be able to help you determine where is the language processing breaking down? Are they understanding vocabulary? Are they not understanding language structure? Are they struggling with verbal reasoning skills? Do they have enough background knowledge? The speech and language pathologist, as well as an audiologist, is going to really give you a good picture of your student's strengths and weaknesses, and that's going to help you as you are the reading expert and the reading teacher at home. So those are some ideas for help and hope um, to, to remember multisensory, explicit, direct instruction, to look for a good Orton-Gillingham-based methodology and program, and to really start with some thorough assessments with a speech and language pathologist and audiologist, as well as possibly the developmental optometrist to look at visual processing problems. Because once we understand why our students are struggling, then it's going to help us to be the best teacher that we can be. But I really want you to know as a parent, you can do this. You can be your child's reading specialist and you're the expert when it comes to teaching your child. And we at HSLDA, your educational consultants, are here to partner with you to make homeschooling possible so that you feel confident and equipped to help your child at home. Thank you for joining me for this workshop and I hope that you found these tips and the resources helpful.